A very good evening. Welcome to News R. My name is Ofriwa Dako. And I am Micheline Taka. To help us with the sign language is Robert Informans. In the headlines, the University of Health and Allied Sciences at Hall graduates its first batch of 166 students. And University of Ghana ranked seventh in Africa and highest in West Africa. An 18-year-old gunman who killed nine people in Munich has no links to Islamic State. Now on the story in detail, the University of Health and Allied Sciences, UHAS at Hull, has graduated its first batch of 166 students. The current pro-vice-chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor John Owusu Ejapon, is expected to assume the post of vice-chancellor of UHAS by 31st of this month, replacing Professor Fred Benka. At the function, President John Mahama said government would invest more into the university so it can live up to its billing. The university's faculty of pharmacy being located at Keta is also expected to start operation in September. Government is committed to growing these young universities and has therefore set aside a budget line in the GET Fund annual get fund to fast track development of infrastructure and equipment in your institutions. The process towards the start of the School of Pharmacy in Keta has commenced and a curriculum has been completed for the approval of the National Accreditation Board and the Pharmacy Council of Ghana. I'm pleased to announce to you that budgetary allocation has been made in the get fund formula for this year for the takeoff of the School of Pharmacy. Government is committed to providing easy access to cost-effective health care services and as close to the family as possible. It is for this reason that I announced earlier during the inauguration of the new campus of UHAS the elevation of the Volta Regional Hospital into the whole teaching hospital. The implementation process is on course with the local organizing committees and subcommittees in place and working towards the realization of this directive. The University of Ghana has been ranked seventh in Africa, making it the highest ranked university in West Africa. The outgoing Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Enes Aite, announced this at a joint congregation ceremony for the College of Health Sciences and the College of Education. He also disclosed that the university is poised to implement fully its 10 year strategic plan from 2014 to 2024 to give the university a new direction in promoting academic excellence. Over 3,000 students graduated. The graduating students were made up of 3,590 from four colleges, 2,142 diplomates and undergraduates, and 1,448 postgraduate students. The postgraduates included 57 new PhDs, many of whom are members of staff of the University of Ghana. This is the first of two sets of graduating ceremonies for students who completed their studies in the 2015-2016 academic year. At the congregation ceremony, the executive director and founder of Hope for Future Generations, Mrs. Cecilia Efua Lodonu Senu, advised the graduates to put what they have acquired into good use to help transform the country. She said no one can single-handedly transform society and that they should help to reduce graduate unemployment in the country. The education you have received from this university no doubt has made you versatile and creative-minded. I will entreat you to let this principle guide you to take full control of your destiny in a manner that will bring positive change to society and mankind. The Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Ernest Aite, also advised the graduates to be innovative and take every situation as a learning process. He gave an overview of the state of the university during his tenure of office and how far they have come. Major initiatives undertaken in the last six years include the development of a master plan for the university and the commencement of the Africa Integras project as well as the Legon City project. Security at the halls of residence was stepped up and students were issued with new ID cards with security features to reduce the number of unauthorized persons entering student facilities for unlawful purposes. 
Emmanuel Buadi Amwafo, one of the four valedictorians from the School of Pharmacy, advised his colleagues to eschew laziness, bribery, and corruption. Ghana Television News anchor Akpene Avo Ajaja and two other members of staff of the organization were part of the congregation. Petroleum Minister Mr. Emmanuel Amakofibua has directed the National Petroleum Authority to strictly implement the petroleum price deregulation policy. He was speaking at this year's Consumer Week celebration at Axim in the Western Region. Statistics at the Reconstructive Surgery and Burns Unit at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital indicate a high incidence of petroleum-related accidents. For this reason, the NPA introduced the Consumer Week celebration to educate the public on the safe use of petroleum products, hence the theme, Petroleum Products Are Safe, Use Them Safely. Through the program, more than 2,000 fisher folk benefited from the education, particularly on the safe use of premix fuel and how to deal with fire emergencies. At the Deba to climax the week, the Ghana National Fire Service demonstrated how to douse fires in fishing communities. Deputy Western Regional Minister Mr. Alfred Jan spoke about the safe use of petroleum products. The CEO of the NPA, Mr. Moses Asaga, said his outfit will continue to protect the interest of consumers by ensuring that they are not cheated. He also raised concern about the rising incidence of petroleum-related accidents. This, he says, is the reason why the NPA adopted the Benz and Reconstructive Surgery Center at Kolibu Teaching Hospital. The board chairman of the Petroleum Commission, Professor Ivan Adaimensa, appealed to all to take the safety campaign seriously by adhering to basic safety measures. On the proliferation of filling stations, he was happy that they are being regulated and called on the NPA and other regulatory agencies to ensure full compliance with the law. The Minister for Petroleum, Mr. Emmanuel Amabua, was unhappy about the seeming selective implementation of the petroleum deregulation policy. He said prices of petroleum products should be automatically reviewed downwards when crude prices drop, as is done when the prices go up. In health this evening, the Society for Nurses in Endoscopy and Minimally Invasive Surgeries has trained nurses and midwives on endoscopy. Endoscopy is viewing of the internal structures of the organs in the human body with the use of scopes and endoscopes. The training was to equip the nurses with the necessary skills to ensure quality service delivery and reduce the risk of patients getting infected during surgery. Endoscopy services was first introduced at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital in 1979. Endoscopy and minimally invasive surgeries help in diagnosis and treatment of a lot of diseases. The program offered nurses and midwives the opportunity to learn about advanced techniques in endoscopy to ensure patient safety during, before and after surgical procedures. A consultant of gastrointestinal disease in the United Kingdom, Dr. Matthew Reco, the resource person at the training, spoke about the rationale behind the exercise. Having a forum like this, offer them that opportunity to share ideas and to challenge ideas and to promote the aims of the organization and ultimately providing the quality and safety in the provision of endoscopy services to patients. The founder of the Society for Nurses in Endoscopy and Minimally Invasive Surgeries, Dr. Joel Kodo, urged government to set up formal institutions to train nurses in endoscopy. Without a trained laparoscopy, minimal invasive nurse, the, the unit can never operate. This is why it is very important for our nurses to be trained and retrained. An officer from the Medical and Surgical Skills Institute, Dr. Kwame Ejiri Tete, encouraged the nurses to translate the knowledge they have acquired into practice to ensure that patients are safe during surgical procedures.
We now take you on the CPP campaign tour where the 2016 flag bearer of the CPP, Mr. Ivor Greenstreet, says the party has factored into and concerns of people living with disabilities into its manifesto. He added that a CPP government under his leadership will implement a policy to ensure that 5% of both public and private employment is reserved for underprivileged citizens. Mr. Greenstreet made these known when he addressed a rally of party faithful and persons living with disabilities at Akumadan in the Offenso North constituency in the Ashanti region. Led by the Ashanti regional executives of the party, Mr. Ivor Greenstreet, who is on a campaign tour of the region, visited Ahinkru in the Fijakwabre North constituency, where he was received by a crowd of party faithful with music and dance. Addressing the people, the CPP flag bearer said, Ghanaians have experienced the two major political parties in power, yet the country is faced with economic challenges, especially in the power sector. He says a CPP government will invest in wind, solar and hydro energy as a medium to long-term solution to the problem. We will build wind turbines 120 meters high, 85 meters in diameter, 300 meters triangular apart, meaning 9,900 of them producing 29,700 megawatts of energy, but with a wind outage of 66% over the entirety of the 1,000 kilometers, Ghana will be able to generate 9,000 megawatts of wind power and energy free. The crowd at Akumadan had defied a downpour and waited for the CPP flag bearer who arrived late in the day. Addressing supporters in the rain, Mr. Greenstreet encouraged persons with disabilities not to look down on themselves, but rather believe in their ability to assert themselves in their fields of endeavor. All of these years, we have had a Disability Act. We were all of these years, we have the UN Convention, but nothing has been done to improve their lives. We have it in our manifesto that our transportation for them will be free. Our access to health care for them will be free. Our access for education for them will be free. And we will pass a law making sure that 5% of jobs by employers, either in the public or private sector, will be made available to them. Touching on national development, the CPP flag bearer expressed concern over the high level of post-harvest losses of agricultural produce in the area, especially tomatoes. Akumadan is a town in the Ofinsu North District known for the production of tomatoes. However, due to the lack of ready market, the farmers have been experiencing post-harvest losses. He said his government will modernize and sustain agriculture through ready market and easy access to marketing centers, as well as improved road network in the hard-to-reach farming areas. Mr. Greenstreet used the rallies to formally introduce the CPP's parliamentary candidates for Efija Kwabre, Mr. Frank Upoku, and his counterpart for Fenso North, Mr. Kweku Boatin, to the people. Away from the CPP campaign tour, voting has ended in the Bumprugu constituency in the northern region for the National Democratic Congress and DC parliamentary primaries. Five candidates contested for the slot. The exercise in the constituency was put on hold last year following a legal battle between the party and a former member of parliament, Namba Berek. Barely two weeks after GBC24 aired a story about the dilapidated nature of Sacred Heart Anglican School at Amasaman, the Ghana Education Service has responded positively to the situation. The GES has temporarily relocated the school at the compound of the Amasaman MA School while the authorities work to complete a three-story block for the school. This is the old Sacred Heart Anglican School at Amasaman. The primary school is on rented land and leaks badly whenever it rains. There's a saying that the early bird catches the worm and students who get to school early are fortunate to grab a desk and sit in groups. The unfortunate ones find other alternatives to catch up with the rest. 
After the contractor abandoned a classroom block project at the foundation level, the school authorities put up this makeshift structure to save the situation. GPC 24 sent an SOS to the Education Directorate to come to their aid. The response is this new facility provided by the Amasaman Municipal Assembly barely two weeks after GPC 24 carried the story. For now, the school temporarily shares a compound with the Amasaman MA school. The school children were beaming with smiles when GBC 24 followed up to their new location. The new classroom block has enough desks for all the pupils, whiteboards, ceiling fans and other facilities. Due to the measure which has seen an increase in the student population, the school now runs a shift system. Whenever it rains, there is drip of water, so it was like booty force in our class. But this place, when we compare that place and this place, it, it is a big difference. That place was disgusting, but this place is superb. This place we are able to learn, there is no noise from the cars. The pupils will move into a new three-story structure and the construction as their permanent location. At the time of our visit, workers were on site putting things together to ensure that they meet the August deadline. This is also to enable the school pupils to move in for the 2016-2017 academic year. The way forward is early completion of this 27-room uh, classroom block. And then also the six-room classroom block, which will make available to us close to 33 new classroom blocks. And when that is done, then we can stop the shift system to begin with. And then also the Anglican school that we have relocated here will also have rooms to themselves. So we can all come at 7.30 and all of us close at uh, almost 3 o'clock. For the children and school authorities of the Sacred Heart Basic School, the latest development will go a long way to ensure effective teaching and learning. Clap for him. The chief of Tikobo number two, Nana Avonia, has praised the government and especially Mrs. Matilde Misa Arthur for making sure that development reaches every part of the country. He gave the commendation when Mrs. Misa Arthur presented laptop computers to heads of schools and solar lanterns to the chiefs and people in the area. Mrs. Misa Arthur asked the people to live together in peace at all times. Theodora Amedeto reports. Tikobo number no. 2 is in the Jomorodik street of the western region. The main occupation of the people is cocoa farming. The chief and people of Tikobo number no. 2 were elated to see Mrs. Emisa Arthur on the visit, the second by a high-profile personality. The first was by the former first lady Nana Kunedu Ajiman Ronis. Mrs. Emisa Arthur donated laptops to some head teachers in the area. She also presented drinks, solar lamps and other items to the chief and elders and promised more educational materials. Mrs. Emisa Arthur asked the people not to allow partisan politics to divide them and advised them to direct their attention to education seriously so that they can take advantage of the numerous development projects springing up in the region. <laughs> The chief of Tikobo number no. 2, Nana Avonwia, commended the government for bringing massive development project into the region. He, however, disclosed that since 1997, when Tikobo number no. 2 was hooked onto the national electricity grid, the population has risen, but development has not kept pace with the population growth. Tikobo number 
Get a quote, you are done here as well. I am wallet or check computers or check educational materials with your bazaar and no more. You get a car or my dinner. Now, as I come here, you are doing on how we get over here. Nana Avonwia and his people praised Mrs. Emisa Arthur for supporting the less privileged in society and were grateful for her visit. Theodora Medeto, GBC 24, Tikobo number 2, Western Region. The chiefs and people of Evalwe Jomronwa constituency in the Nzma East District say their decision to promote togetherness, peace and respect for each other instead of indulging in partisan politics has led to tremendous development in the area. The remarks came at a deba in honor of the wife of the Vice President, Mrs. Matilda Emisa Arthur, during which she donated health and educational materials to the Kutukrum Health Center and the Sikania Sem Basic School Airport by Tudoram Detho. Both the Kutukrum Health Center and the Sikania Sem Basic School are found in the Evalue Ajomoro Jura constituency in the Nzuma East District of the Western Region. The Kutukrum Health Center was established in 1999. The center's challenge is accommodation for staff. While the primary section of the Sikania Sem Basic School has existed since 1951 and the junior high school was added in 1987. Some 600 people fill up the classrooms from the kindergarten to JHS 3. Apart from lack of additional classroom blocks to accommodate the pupils and an ICT center, young teachers refuse posting to the school to replace the aging teachers. This is due to lack of basic amenities such as teachers' accommodation and communication network. The authorities of both the health and education institutions accepted the donation of medical and educational materials, describing it as timely intervention. Mrs. Emisa Arthur reminded the people of the need for peace and unity. <laughs> E krobi a wenchu wenchu womu no mputu on shada maho. Inti muma yen yu yen hu, ne yen kambomu, ne mputu on etu miyaba. Kakran, 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 ne yeko yenim. Nana Koju Mensa, who spoke on behalf of the chiefs and elders of the area, testified that benefit of politics of togetherness, peace and respect for all far outweigh partisan politics. Enche. If it's the seventh November, the same kwa koto aba. The white regime, the Oyangu Pamu Jidiye, say na ed ba kuye. Ni asomje beto aba pa. If it's a young drama, you know, the starting say ya tu aba no. Ya kachire kwa say ya tu aba na ya tu ma papa na na mama na ni asasam. Eba sa yehunu fe. Ya tu mika se twenty twelve kote na drama. Ne evalo ene e jomrano tu aba e ya asomje me nunti ye nya som faso a ye wi en fida Mrs Emisa Arthur used the occasion to interact with the chief and donated some drinks and undisclosed amount of money to them Mrs Emisa Arthur also interacted with some women groups in the community Theodore Amedeto GBC 24 Kutukrum the owner of Ife of Yoruba has paid a courtesy call on the Gamanche Bonini Taki Adamalache as part of his visit to Ghana. History has it that the guns migrated from Ile Ife in Nigeria and settled in Accra. The Oni of Ife of Yoruba land, Alaye Lua Oba Dr. Adeyeye Enitan Babatunde Ugunsi Ujaja, has held discussions with the Gamanche on his first official visit to the country. One in the leg, Jesha. One in the leg, Ashanti. One in the leg, Ghana. One in the leg, Nana. One in the Mauritania. One in the Mali. One in the Libya. I'm Barawa Shekpo. The government chair, Bonini Taki Adamalache, gave an assurance to strengthen the cordial relations between the two groups and presented a set of beads, kente cloth, and a henema slippers to the visiting chief. <laughs> Afe, 
then I can miss you more. You are like you. Welcome back. At the 10th anniversary of the Pentecost University College's business journal, Pentvas, the call was for a concerted effort and new ideas to confront global problems. The Pentvas business journal was launched in September 2007. Articles within the pages are varied from industry and academia. It also helps lecturers and students develop their research writing and problem solving skills. During the 10-year period, the journal has enjoyed wide readership and circulation, 5,000 copies per publication for both home and abroad at public and private universities. This year, the 10th anniversary of the Pentvas Business Journal had the theme, Entrepreneurial Talent, a Challenge to Ghana's Educational System. The board chairman of Abbey National Savings and Loans and former managing director of Bank of Africa, Mr. Mensin C. D. Tokonu, said it was important to encourage the teaching of entrepreneurship from the primary school level to graduate school. Nobody taught us and neither were we told to study hard, obtain good grades and create businesses and secure your financial independence for the future. Nobody told us that. We were all ignorant that we could be job or business creators. This is the crux of the failure in our educational system. The managing director of United Bank of Africa, Mrs. Abiola Bewa, encouraged the students especially to strive to be successful entrepreneurs. The topic entrepreneurship needs to start from primary school. We need to make sure that it gets into our system throughout. Whether you are doing medicine, whether we are doing engineering, whether you are doing banking, you are, whatever topic you are doing, if you are doing gang or tree or anyway, there should be some topic in entrepreneurship. The SRC president of Pentecost University, Imano Kofipoku, said the university business journal is to help people develop new ideas and expose them to new business trends. The benefits of Penvas business journal is that it helps students to build up their research capacity. And then this journal enlightens you and know the strategies or what is into you to be able to come up with a project work. Pentecost University College, a private university, was established in March 2003 by the Church of Pentecost. Still on business, the European Central Bank has decided not to alter its monetary policy while it waits to observe the longer-term impact of Britain's route to leave the European Union. The bank's policy board members met and opted to leave the main interest rate at 0% and the bank deposit rate at minus 0.4%. You welcome to the sports segment. The National Beach Soccer team, the Black Sharks, can have a sigh of relief ahead of the upcoming AFCON competition qualifiers. The Greater Accra Regional Minister Nilai Lai Afoteagbo had promised to mobilize resources to support them. This was disclosed when winners of the Unity Cup match, Team Greater Accra, presented a trophy to him in Accra. Oh. The Comet Fitness Club in Kwabenya was formed a year ago with only seven members. A year on, the group has membership of 75. In celebrating this feat, the group embarked on a 10.06 km walk through the mountainous areas in the community. Members completed 12,584 steps, which resulted in burning 504 calories in the body. A health expert, Dr. Opari, who is the medical director of the club, touched on some benefits of exercising. We found that if you do exercise, you reduce what? The bad cholesterol and increase the good cholesterol, which is very good for our body. It has also been found that with regular health work, you can reduce the chance of getting what? High hypertension. It's very good. Let's look at diabetes type 2 tips specific. It's been found that with regular exercises, 
you can reduce the risk of getting type 2 diabetes by what? 60%, which is credible. Wow. Exercise is very free. You don't buy. If you do health work, you improve your, your blood circulation. Blood moves across all the body. And as it moves, it carries what? Oxygen. As you get to what? Your energy comes. Improve, which is very good. Let's look at a disease like dementia, memory loss. With good exercise, you can improve your, your memory. So there are a lot of benefits that you can get from health work. It's free. Some officials of the club encourage residents in the community to join them. Our interest is to have a healthy community, a community that is well, totally, naturally, not with medication. So we are interested in preventive medicine. Uh, my profession is managing wealth. And actually, you either choose to buy your health with your wealth or you choose your wealth for your health. So it is for the individual to decide. But I would rather choose my health for wealth instead. You don't need to drink cold water right after eating your meals because what it does is that it uh, solidifies the fat in your system. So you, you are better off drinking, say, a tea. Green tea especially if you can. The first anniversary of the Comet Fit Club was supported by the Power Fitness Club. Just watch health expert calling for regular exercises. Back to our earlier story, the national beach soccer team, the Black Sharks, can have a sigh of relief ahead of the upcoming AFCON qualifiers. The Greater Accra Regional Minister Nilae Afutiago has promised to mobilize resources to support the team. This was disclosed when winners of the Unity Cup match, Team Greater Accra, presented the trophy to him in Accra. The just ended B Soccer Unity Cup was won by Team Greater Accra after battling Team Volta in a fierce encounter at the Labi Soccer Arena. It took a breathtaking goal from tournament top scorer Michael Osa in the closing minutes to clinch victory for the host region. The team won the best coach, top goal scorer prize, and two glittering trophies. The contingent, which made the region proud, joined some officials of the Ghana Beach Soccer Association to pay a courtesy call on the regional minister, Nilaya Futiagbo, and the youth and sports minister, Nilante Vanderpoy. They officially presented their silverware to them. The regional minister, Nilaya Futiagbo, praised the team for their effort and promised his full support. With what I have experienced and seen today, I want to assure the team that I'm going to be behind the team. I never hesitate in coming out and even going to the stream by giving the team whatever support that they need. We can contain them. And with the support of my own brother, who is the Minister for Youth and Sports, with him and myself, we can assure you of our support that can push you to a level. Whatever it takes for us, to support the team, we will do it. The Youth and Sports Minister Nilante Van der Poy said plans are in place for the construction of modern beach soccer arenas. Some of the players from the Greater Crack team are expected to be included in the national team for the upcoming AFCON qualifiers. Welcome back. In a few weeks, the FPSO, JEA Mills and Subsea Equipment will go through a series of rigorous tests. Once the operation is successfully completed, the vessel will be declared ready for oil production. Talo Ghana, the operator, will also declare the field including oil and gas reservoirs, production, injection wells and extensive subsea equipment on the seabed ready to start operations, report by Dorothy Ajima. An FPSO is a vessel used to produce and store oil from offshore oil fields. FPSO is an acronym of floating, production and storage of offloading. For deep water oil fields, which are several kilometers offshore, an FPSO is the preferred option in the oil and gas industry. An FPSO can be built from scratch or converted from a very large crude carrier, the VLCC. FPSO Professor John Evans at a mills is converted from the VLCC Contennial Jewel. The facility is as three times a football pitch. Its length is 350 meters, width is 56 meters and accommodates 120 people with an oil production capacity of 80 barrels per day. 
it has a 1.7 million barrels oil storage capacity. A turret is a section that is anchored to the seabed and allows the rest of the vessel to move around depending on tidal conditions. This is the turret of the 10 FPSO and is currently the largest turret in existence. Modek Ghana Limited operates the FPSO on behalf of the 10 partners. In line with the commitments made by the 10 partners in the Plan of Development, POD, Talo initiated an international secondment program which has seen a total of 45 Ghanaians from GNPC, the Petroleum Commission of Ghana and Talo Ghana Limited. Many of these seconders have now returned to Ghana and will be part of the team that operates and manages the 10 fields once it starts producing oil. In connection with the local content and participation, the key focus of Talo Ghana, which is a 47.18% holder, is to have a local content and local capacity development. The 10 partners are committed to maximizing local content throughout the project in a plan which was approved by government in 2013. With this, they were required to submit a comprehensive local content plan as part of their bid to contractors outlining how they would maximize the amount of work undertaken in Ghana and ensure the training of Ghanaians. This seeks to create long-term opportunities for Ghanaians in the growing oil industry. 30 Ghanaians were recruited by Modek to work on the project in Singapore. As part of their training, 15 of them completed and graduated from the Training Technical College TTE in the UK with international recognized vocational qualification. On remuneration and workman's compensation, the acting chief executive of the Petroleum Commission Ghana, Mr. Theophilos Eshring, so GBT24 that approximately 90 workers were employed and 90% are Ghanaians. All around the world there is what we call expatriate premium. If there is a difference between local compensation and an expatriate compensation and the difference is just the premium for expatriation, that is okay with us. It happens everywhere in the world. But we are realizing that beyond this there are some disparities and, and I'm telling you we are working on it. I won't give you names of companies but certain companies have actually um, gone through the process with us and I believe I preach to a certain extent uh, we are happy that this improvement has happened in some of these. It is still happening. There are disparities we are working on. Samuel Womeno, a health and safety advisor, said workers take 28 days off after working for 28 days. He stressed that skills in the field is of the essence. One thing about this industry, they value training a lot. So everybody working here, you have some uh, standard training to receive or skills to acquire before you can work here. So they make sure that you get that skills, exposure, so that you can work competently and efficiently in the vessel. GBC24 learned that currently about half of the LPG produced in the country is derived from the FPSO Kwame Chroma. Dorothy Ajumai reporting for GBC24 Takrade. This is entertainment segment. Now, the chiefs and people of Agotime traditional area in the Volta region have launched the 21st edition of the Kinti Festival in Accra. This year's Kinti Festival aims at projecting the cultural values of Kinti for unity and development. The one-week festival starts from the 4th of September and will end on the 11th of the same month at Petoy in Agotime. Agotime and the Volta region is among areas in Ghana with the highest number of weavers. Kinte weaving is a major source of livelihood for the people. The festival was instituted by the chiefs and people to promote the Kinte weaving industry, preserve the uniqueness of the cloth and introduce innovation into the industry. The launch of this year's event was witnessed by dignitaries including Nenenue Kiteku III, corner of Agotime traditional area, the Minister for Tourism, Mrs. Elizabeth Ofosio-Jari, and the Minister for Health, Mr. Alex Segbefia. They were all dressed in Kente. 
The Minister for Tourism, Culture and Creative Art, Mrs. Elizabeth Ofosuejari, who formally introduced a new design code, Tetriku Kente, promised to support the initiative. I wish to assure you, Nene, and the people of Agotime traditional area of my personal support as you continue to promote this area as a beautiful tourism site. I also promise that the ongoing tourism information office and Vista Receptive Center at Petoy will be completed in due course. The Minister for Health, Mr. Alessagrafia, who has witnessed previous Kinti festivals, shared his experience. There are lots of things, cultural activities, that occurred during the week leading up to the actual festival. It is a beautiful sight to see the ladies walking to the riverside. It is a beautiful sight to see the young men with their muskets shooting. It is even lovelier on the day when you see a kente weaver being carried shoulder high while he weaves his kente. It is a unique and beautiful festival. There were cultural display which portrayed the rich culture of the people of Abotima. So on the lighter side of news, Olomide, one of Africa's most popular singers, has been caught on camera purportedly kicking a woman at the main airport in Kenya. Well, it's been an hour of news. Thanks so much for your time. Good evening.